unsolved heists from around the world. Picture this, a group of skilled criminals executing a meticulously planned heist, leaving no trace behind. The scene of the crime is left in chaos, with authorities struggling to piece together what happened, but the real mystery is just beginning. In this video, we'll explore some of the most captivating unsolved heists from around the world, where criminals pulled off daring robberies and vanished without a trace. Are you ready to immerse yourself in the world of high stakes crime and mystery? Get ready to join us on a journey through the most puzzling heists of all time. At number one is the unsolved Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum Heist. When eccentric art collector Isabella Stewart Gardner decided to open the doors of her beautiful Boston mansion to the general public in order to showcase her outstanding art collection, she did so with the highest of intentions. Over a whole lifetime of exploration, Gardner amassed his collection, which included works of art by such renowned artists as Rembrandt and Vermeer, and was comprised of their utmost finest. Because of this, it was all the more terrible when, on the evening of March 18th, 1990, Two men pretending to be police officers forced their way into the museum and made off with more than $500 million worth of the world's best paintings and sketches. The theft from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum was the greatest theft of privately owned property in American history. And the museum offered the highest reward ever awarded by a private organization in response to the crime. Rick Abbath and Randy Hestand, the two security guards who were working that night at the museum, had no reason to expect that their shift would be anything other than completely routine. They were working at the museum when the crime occurred. Abbas, however, let two individuals who purported to be police officials inside the museum at 1.20 a.m. on the pretext that they were looking into a noise complaint. Within 11 minutes, the two intruders blindfolded and handcuffed both guards, informed them of their genuine intentions and then chained them up in the basement of the museum with a threat to remain silent. The thieves said they would be paid a reward in 12 months if they carried out their plan successfully. The thieves went on a rampage through the museum because no one was there to stop them. They removed paintings like Jan Vermeer's The Concert, Rembrandt's The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, and A Lady and Gentleman in Black, and Goviet Flinick's Landscape with Obelisk from their frames. They then threw the paintings to the ground in order to break the protective glass cases that had been surrounding them. After that, they stole a bronze beaker from Chinese Shang Dynasty, a miniature self-portrait by Rembrandt, five drawings of Edgar Degas, an eagle symbolizing the French Empire, and ultimately, they stole Chess Tortoni by Edouard Manet. Once the guards were found the next morning, the detectives could only assert one thing with absolute certainty, that the two thieves very probably had no knowledge whatsoever about art. They had failed to notice some of the most valuable artworks and artifacts in a city, Yet the drawings, Eagle and Bronze Beaker were only worth a few tens of thousands of dollars when taken together. Over the course of several years, the police have been unable to establish beyond a reasonable doubt the guilt of any of the countless individuals they've investigated, who have included both foreign art thieves and local criminals. In point of fact, a geriatric Boston gangster by the name of Robert Gentile is about to be freed from jail, where he was detained on a weapons charge the police consider him to be their best lead. The stolen artwork has never been found, despite the fact that the museum continues to offer a reward for $10 million for any information that leads to the recovery of the stolen artwork. Next up, we have the Antwerp Diamond Heist. The Antwerp Diamond Heist is known as one of the most famous heists that has never been solved, and it involves a criminal group breaking into a vault that is considered to be one of the safest in the world. In 2003, the Italian criminal organization known as the School of Turin made off with loose diamonds, gold and silver, worth a total of 90 million pounds from the Belgian Diamond Center. Leonardo Notar Bartolo, a career criminal also known as The Artist, conceived the scheme. During trips to the bank dressed as a diamond dealer, he utilized a camera concealed inside a pen to figure out the layout of the vault. He was the genius behind the heist. It was thought that no one could break into the facility that housed the vault, since it was a 14-story fortress that was defended by metal turnstiles, and had a private security crew that checked the identification of everyone who entered. The safe included 10 different levels of protection, 
such as infrared heat detectors, Doppler radar, a magnetic field, a seismic sensor, and a lock that had 100 million different potential combinations. Throughout the course of his trips, he was granted access to the vault, where he saw hundreds of safe deposit boxes, each of which had 11,000 different potential combinations. Notar Bertolo spent months planning the heist with his partners in crime. The genius who specialized in alarm systems and the monster who was good with everything from picking locks to mechanics and electronics. The gang constructed a replica vault and Notar Bertolo spent months planning the heist with his partners in crime. The King of Keys, an elderly gentleman known as one of the most skilled key counterfeiters in the world, and Speedy, a close friend of the King's. A consignment of diamonds from De Beers worth millions of dollars had been transported to the neighborhood two days before the theft, making it an ideal opportunity for the gang to make their move. On the day of the robbery, the gang sneaked in via a balcony and made their way to the vault by hiding cameras and disabling the security system while the genius did his thing. They removed the magnetic field while they were in the antechamber of the vault, and the King of Keys was shocked to see the vault's original key hanging in a nearby utility room. This meant they had successfully broken into the vault. While working against the time and attempting to keep their pulse rates down, the monster began the process of deactivating an alarm that was located within the vault. Their body warmth was warming the space. The King of Keys started breaking into the deposit boxes while the rest of the gang quickly gathered as much loot as they could before making their way back to Notar Bartolo's automobile outside the building. But the gang would run into trouble when Speedy and Notar Bartolo attempted to get rid of the evidence with the intention of torching everything in the woods. Before they ran away from the scene, Speedy, who was notorious for having panic attacks and causing the others to feel uneasy, became agitated and spread evidence all over the place. Yet, a farmer who had issues with local adolescents dumping trash on his property discovered the bag and alerted the police. The evidence led them directly to Notar Bertolo's arrest. The farmer was the one who called the police. After escaping with the stolen gems to Italy, the monster, Ferdinando Finotto, the genius, Elio De Noio, and Speedy. They were all apprehended and sentenced to five years in prison for their involvement in the crime. As the King of Keys was never apprehended, it will always be a mystery how precisely the gang was able to circumvent such a large number of safety precautions. And lastly, we'll talk about French Riviera jewel heist. French authorities reported on Monday that a single jewel thief broke into the luxurious Colton International Hotel in the resort town of Cannes, on the French Riviera, and stole diamond-encrusted watches and gems valued at a total of $136 million. This makes the theft one of the largest jewel heists in the history of the world. After the audacious robbery that occurred in the middle of the day on Sunday, initial estimates placed the worth of the stolen gems at $53 million. Philippe Vic, who works for the Office of the Regional Prosecutor, told local media that a subsequent inventory revealed that additional items had been stolen from a hotel room that had inadequate security. It was being used to store other items for a diamond exhibit that was being put on by Leviev Diamond House, which is based in Dubai. Nice Matin, a significant daily in the area, published an article speculating that the theft may be the most expensive in history, surpassing a steal of $190 million from a similar gem display in Paris in 2008 which occurred during the same year. The publication said that the level of security that was provided for the Diamond Show, which had its opening on July 20th, was scheduled to run through August, was woefully inadequate. It reported anonymous cops as claiming that the Carlton is difficult to defend due to the fact that its stores open onto the Quasset Promenade, which is packed with visitors and celebrities during the Spring Film Festival and throughout the summer. The daring attack, which was carried out in a short amount of time and without the use of firearms or resulting in any injuries, prompted authorities and security specialists to speculate that the famed Pink Panther's jewel thieves were re-establishing their network. As a result of two recent jailbreaks, three important members of the gang that, according to Interpol, has stolen more than $400 million worth of jewelry over the course of the last 15 years have been let free. Milan Paparic, a 34-year-old Pink Panther from Bosnia, who was serving a sentence of nearly seven years for a jewelry store robbery in Switzerland in 2009, was freed after an attack on a Swiss prison on a Thursday night. The prison is located in Orbe, which is close to the French border. It is believed that the members of the gang were behind the attack. In May, two other members of the Pink Panthers managed to escape from the Bois Mame jail. 
According to Interpol, the Pink Panthers are mostly comprised of thieves from the region that was once known as Yugoslavia. The term Pink Panthers was given to the network of jewel thieves by Interpol in allusion to the film of the same name, which was released in 1963 and starred Peter Sellers as the inept inspector, Klausio and David Niven as a crafty jewel thief. The brazen heist that occurred in Cannes on Sunday showed the signs of the Pink Panther group, according to Jonathan Sazanov, the US editor of the website of the Museum Security Network who spoke with the Associated Press in Paris. During this year's Cannes Film Festival, there were two significant jewel heists that occurred. One of the thefts involved a cache of necklaces and earnings worth $1.4 million that were intended to be loaned to movie stars to wear to the swanky parties and premieres that took place during the festival. The Carlton Hotel that was attacked on Sunday was also the scene of a daring heist that took place in August 1944. At that time, armed robbers entered the hotel's jewelry shop while shooting what subsequently turned out to be the blanks and made off with items worth $77 million. And that concludes our journey through some of the most baffling heists in history. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling ride through the dark underbelly of crime once more. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating explorations into this world's most captivating mysteries.